Uh, so she is real. Yes, uh, she's what we call a clone. Um, so she's not found in the wild. She was created in a lab, but she was created using DNA from an actual dinosaur species called the Mongolian Velociraptor. Uh, because the DNA that we're using is so old, uh, parts of it are degraded. So she doesn't look exactly like her ancestors did. Uh, for example, her ancestors were feathered dinosaurs, so she should be covered in feathers. Um, we didn't get that gene, um, partially because the DNA is so old. Um, we might be able to find it, um, but the thing is, is our geneticists, when they make changes to the genetic code, they have to make sure that they're only making decisions that are going to benefit her health. And so because she was going to grow up healthy without feathers, uh, they made the decision not to try and turn it on because they could accidentally mess something up, you know? Cloning a dinosaur isn't as easy as you may think. You can't just take DNA of a dinosaur and use it for cloning. This is because DNA's half-life is 521 years, which means after 521 years from the death of an organism, genetic information in DNA are no longer suitable for cloning. During these 521 years, DNA begins to disintegrate until it loses its ability to be cloned. And because dinosaurs existed millions of years ago, genetic information from these features cannot last to the present day. However, there is still a solution around this problem. Although ancient DNA cannot be cloned, it could still be sequenced. Scientists can sequence the genetic information of ancient DNA samples and fill the gaps with DNA from the descendants of the dinosaurs, in this case, birds. Once the entire genome is fully prepared, it could be printed using a machine called Automatic DNA Synthesizer, which would create a fresh DNA sample that could be used for 